I'm Bobby. I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make a rack to hold a whole bunch of guitars. Recently I've been trying to get back into playing guitar as a hobby, and that's reminded me that I've been meaning to build a new holder for my guitars. This one right here holds three guitars, but I actually have a few more and I can't put them all in one place. So today we're gonna make something that mimics this, but lets you add more guitars and lets you change the spacing right here at the top. Let's get to it. I've had this really nice piece of cherry for a long time. I wanna use this for the project, but first I need to mill it down and get it flat on all the sides and then cut it into strips. Because this piece was so thick, I actually had to take two passes on the table saw to get all the way through it. And unfortunately, cherry burns really easily. So all of these sides now have burn marks on them. I'm gonna run them through the sander to clean them off before I move on. I've got these pretty much cleaned up. Now the idea is for there to be a tall piece sitting at an angle that's connected to a bottom cross piece, and then there'll be another one coming up here for support. So I want this piece to sit at about 70 degrees. So down here, I actually took my protractor and I set it to 70 degrees. And then if I line up this outside edge and then right on the corner, I can draw a little line. Now if you take away that 70 from a 90, you're gonna end up with a 20 degree angle. So we're gonna set the miter saw to 20 degrees and cut off this chunk and on the other end. I cut the bottom pieces with the same angle and that's so that these pieces will match up right there. Now these are gonna be connected with a half lap. So I'm gonna end up putting them on the same plane. I'll cut away this section of this one and the opposite section of the bottom and then they should fit together and all stay on the same plane. That's the idea for all three of these pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything cut and then we'll work on the half laps. To get these pieces cut out, I'm gonna lay them in the position that I want them to be in and then go ahead and label them so that I know that these two corners of these two pieces go together. I'm gonna to use a knife just to make a little score as close as I can to this piece along that line. Now I can transfer this line to the other sides so I know which section to cut out and those transfer lines will be right up against this piece. The bandsaw has a little deflection in it, so my cut is a little bit different here than it is right in the middle. Now you can fix that with a chisel and some sanding. Just letting you know, if you use a bandsaw for something like that, it may not turn out to be a perfectly good cut, or you may need to just adjust the tension on your bandsaw to get rid of that deflection. We've got all these pieces cut and fit together really nicely. So now I'm gonna add some glue to the half laps, clamp them so that they can dry. And I'm also gonna add just some glue in between this butt joint for now. And then later on, we'll come back and drill a hole and drive a screw in from the back side just to reinforce that joint. The glue on these is dry and my beard is trimmed, so now we're ready to move on. The next step is to attach these together, and to do that, I'm gonna use some big pieces of poplar dowel. These are one and an eighth inch thick, and they shouldn't flex over the distance that I'm gonna use. So the next thing will be to drill some holes through both of these pieces and drive those dowels in on the front and the back on the bottom. But at the top, we're actually gonna connect them with aluminum extrusion. Unfortunately, the largest tap that I have is actually too small for this opening. It's got some kind of cutouts in it, so you can't seat it really well, and it's not gonna be a clean thread. So instead, I'm gonna use a steel screw and actually turn that into the aluminum to create the threads. I'm gonna use the tap to get it started so this has something to bite into.
Drilling these big holes at the same time is really important so that they're perfectly in line. At the top, I need a really small hole, just big enough for that bolt to go through, but then I also need a countersink behind it so that the head of the bolt can sit on the inside of the piece of cherry. So right now, I'm gonna drill a through hole that's really small, just small enough to be a reference point between the two, and then I'll take it apart and drill the through hole and the countersink individually. Now I think we can go ahead and start assembling this, but before we put this in between the two side pieces, these nuts have to go into the track. Both of these ends are gonna be covered, and so this piece needs to be inside that track, and then later on we can go add the pieces to that and slide it back and forth, but we have to make sure that they're all in here before we capture this piece. This thing is really sturdy so far, it's looking pretty good, except for one little thing, it's too close to the ground. These two bars down here need to hold the bottom of the guitar, and if there's any sort of a nut that sticks off the bottom of the guitar for the strap, it's probably gonna hit the ground. So I got these rubber stoppers that I'm gonna use for feet. You could also just buy furniture feet and actually put underneath this. This is what I could find locally at lunchtime, so I'm gonna cut these down and put them on the bottom. That lifts it up off the ground just enough. It's a perfect amount. So the next thing is to make the hangers that are gonna go up here and actually capture the guitars. I'm gonna make some little U's out of wood and then just drive some screws into these nuts that are captive in here. I put together a quick prototype of what I'm thinking here just to give you an idea and to make sure that it would work. It's gonna look a little bit differently, but essentially it's a little U that will capture the neck of the guitar and then has a recessed hole down in here so that that screw can fall down so it won't come in contact with the neck of the guitar. Then this whole piece will just get screwed in, to, in one of these nuts. So if you tighten that down really well, it's actually nice and sturdy, but also it's super easy to loosen slide down, and you can even change the angle to account for the angle of the neck if you need to. The prototype works just fine. I do think I'm gonna make some changes just to the overall shape, but essentially it will be the same. I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker, so there's a little bit more meat just for strength, and I'm gonna make these out of solid wood. I've got a big chunk of basswood, so I'm gonna make six more of these, and then we'll put them on. Quick change of plans. I was gonna use basswood and I have plenty of it to use, but I would have to make all these pieces a lot thinner. Turns out I had a piece of cherry already the correct thickness, so I'm just gonna use this for these instead.
In changing this design a little bit, I was trying to make it kind of organic, but then I realized that I'm going to have to cut six of these, and getting them to be exactly the same between all six is going to be pretty difficult. So instead, I think I'm going to take the overall square, it's basically a square, and drill a big hole using a Forstner bit in the same location. If this is the back side, then the hole will be right in the middle, and then I can just connect that hole to the front edges and then kind of round those over a little bit. I think that's going to be a lot easier to repeat to get all of the pieces to look really similar. I got all six of these holders done, and remember I mentioned earlier that cherry burns really easily. Just by rounding these over on the sander, it burned all the edges. Luckily, that doesn't really matter for us because I want to coat this entire surface, inside and out, with leather. Not the top and the bottoms, just the area where the guitar is going to come in and sit against. I've got a really thin piece of leather here that's going to be easy to wrap around that shape. So I'm going to go ahead and add some dye to this, and then cut it into strips, and then I'll glue it on here with barge. I'm going to use some black dye on this, which I've never done before, but I think it'll look good with the black aluminum that we have on this. Also, we've covered the dyeing process several times in different videos in case you want to see all of the details of how to finish it. It's a pretty quick and easy process. And the reason I'm using leather for this instead of foam is that apparently certain types of foam will break down the finish of certain guitars. Leather seems to be safe, so we're going to go with that. To coat both the leather and the wood, I'm going to use just some beeswax. There's an atom wax, which is really good for leather, but anything will work just fine. And luckily, this stuff works as a wood finish really well also. All right, so I drop the bolt in there and then screw it into the nut that's captive in this track. Now I've just got to finish up the other five of these and then sand and finish the wood, and this thing is all done. Here it is, the completed guitar stand, and I am very, very happy with how this thing turned out. Now, there's a couple of things that I think I will continue to change on this. I think the rubber feet on the bottom need to be a little bit taller because some of these do end up touching the ground. And I also think maybe wrapping the two bottom dowels in leather would not only look cool, but also protect the bottom of the guitars a little bit more. Those are easy add-ons that I can do to this even after it's already put together. Now, being able to move these around and put the spacing differently in between the guitars is super cool, especially for something big like an acoustic. And if I want to add more, it's just a matter of adding another one of these hangers in the line. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may be interested in. And if you're not subscribed, please go ahead and do that and hit the bell down there so you get notified every time we put up a new video. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And that has reminded me that I've been it mimics this, kind of, but uh, the something that mimics this, but lets you add, dang it, let's, wow. ah, ah,
come in and sit against. So I'm gonna got, I'm gonna got to hold a whole bunch of guitars. 